Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, the Minister of Legal Affairs outlines his reasons why the Bahamas should still remain under the Privy Council. Plus, the search is on for a new president of the College of the Bahamas. And after closing one store, KFC pushes a deal many did not miss. The Bahamas Tonight starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. A CARICOM agreement ties the Bahamas to a yearly $10 million bail and is for something we didn't even use. Good evening, everyone. I'm LaDawn Davis. And I'm Andrew Knowles. Thanks for joining us. The Caribbean Court of Justice was established in 2001, and the Bahamas, along with many other Caribbean countries, were burdened with a $10 million a year bill for the entity that is only used by Barbados, Guyana, and Belize. Minister of State for Legal Affairs Damian Gomez is of the view that the Bahamas should remain under the Privy Council. He spoke exclusively with our Janaya Noel Ferguson today on the issue. The Bahamas pays about $10 million to the Caribbean Court of Justice. And Minister of Legal Affairs in the Attorney General's Office, Damian Gomez, says the Bahamas has never used it and there are trade implications for the country if we stop paying for it. When the first $10 million was donated, it was under the... Um, Ingram administration and they must have had some reason for um, making that sort of payment. So have we paid since? Uh... Well we are required to because they've signed on to this. We are part of CARICOM mm -hmm. and in terms of trade disputes which may arise between member countries the Caribbean Court of Justice is the forum in which those disputes are ventilated. Um, and to that extent, we contribute to the maintenance of the court. Now, how often do we really have to call on that court or, or utilize their services? <laughs> Almost ne never. Almost never. Many believe that if the Bahamas were to sever its ties with the Privy Council and join the CCJ, this would ensure that a death sentence is carried out, especially after recent rulings by the Council to forego a death sentence. And you will not get a consensus um, from the legal community, as has happened throughout the rest of the region, on um, substituting the CCJ for the Privy Council. The CCJ don't even enjoy of independence of tenure, which was the real problem um, uh, in the Jamaican context why the government's efforts there to join the CCJ failed in the Privy Council. Now, Minister of Legal Affairs in the Office of the Attorney General, Damian Gomez, says for the Bahamas to rid itself of the Privy Council would be downright irresponsible. Because you're giving up something that has value for something that you're concerned about. That value, he says, is especially important because the Bahamas relies heavily on legal services for the financial services sector. For us to um, willy-nilly abandon the forum, which undergirds public confidence in that financial sector, would be, in my view, irresponsible. Now, despite calls for the Bahamas to utilize the Caribbean Court of Justice, Minister Gomez says this is just not the right move at this time. Chinea Noel Ferguson, ZNES Network News. A gathering of some of the world's wealthiest investors and business owners will converge at the Atlantis Resort Paradise Island for the annual Global Financial Summit. The three-day conference, which opens tomorrow, will discuss what's going on with the world's economy and how to invest. The conference will also provide workshops on growing and developing your business. And as Clint Watson tells us, for the first time, the local business and financial community is being given access to the information and emerging trends. Bahamian business professionals and economic analysts are being given the opportunity of a lifetime to network with some of the world's wealthiest and leading financial experts at the Global Financial Summit at the Atlantis Resort. Marketing executive and one of the conference speakers, Craig Huey, called to the gathering of the top educators on the economy. Well, Dr. Mark Skousen used to live here, and, you know, we think here in the Bahamas, there's so much opportunity. 
there's opportunity for business growth, for people with dreams to be able to grow those dreams. And so uh, the conference has decided to give a special discount to anybody who wants to go to the conference starting Wednesday night all the way through sat Saturday, just packed with information. Now, uh, for my own session, I'm giving a session for business owners or those who want to start a business, uh, whether it's a large business or small, on how to use the most powerful marketing techniques and strategies to be able to be uh, to, to grow a business in a way that um, can supercharge the growth. Huey says they continue to choose the Bahamas because quite simply, it's a great place to come. The Bahamas has such incredible growth potential. It has growth potential for anybody who wants to have a, a company that's just serving people in the Bahamas and the tourists, but also to be able to expand a market into the U.S. and internationally. The opportunities for local businesses to network are reportedly great. Several local vendors are already confirmed to set up boots to attract potential investor. On how the U.S. and international investors can put money here into the Bahama economy and grow, whether it's real estate, businesses. And so you'll be able to see some of the brightest, uh, not only brightest speakers, but many attendees who have uh, an eye for opportunity, an eye for looking for a new investment capital. And so it, it, it is a huge opportunity. Basically, it's better than going to a university. In, uh, uh, in, in this sense, it's practical, hands-on. You get to meet the people. You get to see uh, the excitement of, of uh, how to be able to take your investments, take your business ideas, and grow them. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Labor Minister Shane Gibson says there's not much he can do until he signs off on the strike vote certificate for Sandals employees. Last week, it was reported that more than 90% of employees voted in favor of a strike vote. But Sandals officials have said that less than 50% of employees participated and the company always seeks to follow the labor laws of the country. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what happened. I've not um, seen the results um, officially. Uh, from the strike board, they have not been asked to sign off on the certificate, and so really to be up, um, to comment on it at this stage would, I think, be inappropriate as the minister responsible for labor and the person would have to sign the strike certificate ultimately. College of the Bahamas presidential candidate Dr. Philip Carey said if appointed, he pledges to raise $500 million over the next 10 years through a major fundraising campaign. Carey, a professor of sociology and former dean of the College of Arts and Sciences at North Carolina A&T State University, presented his reasons why he is the right fit for leadership at CLB. Faculty, students, and members of the public had an opportunity to question Dr. Carey about his vision during a special forum at the Harry Seymour Library. One of the ways we're going to raise some of this money is through the attraction of international students to our very fine programs that we will develop here. In the very early stages of my presidency, establish a youth reclamation program. I call it a Bahamian Youth Reclamation Educational Program. What I mean by that, we have to reach out to many of our students who are dropouts, headed for trouble, already in trouble, but they have ability. Dr. Carey is one of four candidates shortlisted for the position of president. COBA's presidential advisor, Ashley Knowles, and student Teron Monroe both gave their take on Dr. Carey's plans. A very enlightening one. Um, he's brought some new ideas and some initiatives that I haven't heard of before. So it'll be very interesting to see how these ideas play out in the college community. I thought that he had like a emphatic expression, but to me, he has, his words were pretty much fluff. I didn't see much of a presentation where he said um, he'd deliver X, Y, Z results. 
Testimony continued today in the Raymond Roll attempted rape and burglary trial. During the proceedings, a police officer testified that on June 23rd of last year, he arrested Roll shortly after he saw him running from a residence. The officer noted that Roll had already taken off his clothes and was bareback, wearing only his boxers. He also indicated that Roll had on an ankle bracelet. The trial continues before Justice Vera Watkins. A jury has convicted well Wendell Williams, also known as MacGyver, of having unlawful sex with an eight-year-old girl two years ago. Court evidence showed that Williams, who was a family friend, was at the child's home when he molested her. Williams appeared visibly shaken after jurors returned the 6-3 guilty verdict last evening before Justice Indra Charles. He will be sentenced on March 24th. Attorney Jaram Mangra defended him. London's Daily Mail newspaper tonight is reporting that 13 rare San Salvador rock iguanas were found stuffed in socks by smugglers and that officials at Heathrow confiscated the animals. Customs officers discovered the endangered lizards in a suitcase when they stopped two Romanian women who had arrived from the Bahamas. The Daily Mail reported that 12 of the iguanas survived the trip. The two Romanian women were taking the San Salvador rock iguanas, which are native to the Bahamas and classed as being under threat of extinction onto Dusseldorf in Germany. Officials consider this seizure to be a very important one. Grant Miller from the Border Off Forces Endangered Species team was quoted by the mail saying that this particular species of iguana is incredibly rare as only a few hundred are believed to be left in existence. In fact, they're so rare that they can cost around $200 each on the black market. He said given the circumstances they were found in, it seems incredibly that, incredible that all but one survived such a long flight. The surviving animals were dehydrated and are now under the supervision of a specialist vet. As for the Romanian women, they are being held on suspicion of importation offenses. In our first look at weather, high pressure continues to influence our weather and it is whipping up the lower portion of the atmosphere with those brisk winds and it's generating one or two sporty showers. But outside of our studios, we have partly cloudy skies, temperatures 77 degrees, relative humidity 84%. Your winds are out of the east southeast at 8 knots, barometric pressure 1,019.7 millibars. That's 30.11 inches in this study. But stay tuned. Temperatures around the family violence, travel and boating forecast is still to come. And still to come, one high school shows off its golden achievers. Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, we'll tell you about the Archdiocese of Nassau hosting the Antilles Conference. And one KFC closes, and what a deal hits the capital. Find out more on the run on Chicken today. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. This segment of the news is brought to you by Shell Quality Fuels.